All right, well, good morning and hello to all of you active traders. A really big turnout. Wow, good to see you all here. Uh, I'm Ken Calhoun from Trade Mastery with our Trading Week Ahead broadcast for today, Saturday, June the 11th. It's already summertime. Summertime! Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Ba -da -ba 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 -da -ba -da -ba. Anyway, good morning. I like I love music uh, and I love trading and uh, we're here with a little bit of both and I, I love active traders so good to see some smart people here uh, good to see us underway so what about that wild market what do you guys think I've been making so much money lately it's been great uh, I trade UVXY religiously uh, and SQs SQs has actually been a sharper better chart than UVXY anyway you guys were correct when I asked you guys last week Congratulations. Last week I asked you what did you think was ahead for this week and we all said the market's going down. So yay bears, we got it. And making so much money if you're on the right side of things. So hope that you guys are equally happy and doing well. I told, not to say I told you so there son, but I told you UVXY and SQs. I'll tell you for next week too. UVXY, SQQQ, TZA. Learn it, live it. Love it. And cold, too. I made so much money on the spike in KOLD uh, when it did the spike up, I think it was Thursday. It was Wednesday or Thursday. I did a big spike up, pull back, natural gas inverse, doing really good. Anyway, so what's up with this wacky S&P? Well, we've obviously got 3,800, just 10 handles down from our 39. We've got hammer support here. It's hammer time. Hammer support down here at the 3,800. So we definitely want to aggressively short the market and buy puts and by in inverse instruments if the market gets under and stays under the 3800. Immediate resistance is, I would use Thursday, or I'm sorry, Friday's open range of the 4000. Now, what's of more importance to me, what's of more value to me, my biggest profitable winning trades this last com couple of months all come from a very careful understanding of the volatility index or a VIX. Now, remember last week, do you guys remember last week I told you 24 was support in, the, support in the VIX, right? And the reason was that's our trend line from back here. So does everybody clearly see the previous peak back on the left side of that formed the support? So previous support is, uh, previous resistance is now new support and we're spiking up off the 24. Now, with a big sell-off on Thursday and Friday, we would expect the VIX to be up closer to 32, 34 than it currently is. The good news for us who trade VIX instruments like UVXY or formerly things like TVIX and VXX is that we've got a really a good plays in our instruments. Uh, really good opportunities to trade our VIX instruments if they do move up on a continued sell-off come Monday. So let's take a look at our charts. One thing, how to say, the most important thing I will tell you today is this. If the VIX stays over 30, if we break 30 and stay over it, watch out below the market's going straight to heck, right? So we want to aggressively short the stock market and or buy our inverse instruments and scale in for both swing and day trades if the volatility index gets over 30 and holds over 30. That's our key. Remember that. Now, remember, I've got a lot of traders in the industry, institutional guys and all that too. We're all looking collectively professionals. We're looking at 30 in the VIX. 36, 37 is the obvious high. That's kind of late to the party. You know the VIX, right? It goes up and then it goes back down. So we want to aggressively, the trigger point for aggressively trading inverse instruments and index puts and shorting the stock market is if the volatility index gets over 3.0 and holds for at least a day, right? So a VIX over 30, that's a key signal. That's the most important thing I'll tell you this week. VIX 30, yes or no, okay? Supports obviously 24. If we head back down under 24, then the bulls will come back for a brief rally, brief bear market rally attempt. But the main thing for all of us to pay attention to very carefully is volatility over 30. If the VIX does continue climbing over 30, watch out below the stock market will continue to crash and burn. It's been so easy to trade, right? How many of you are making money yesterday? Let's take a look. Now, how many of you were also trading SQs yesterday and Thursday? I was, because it goes up when the market goes down. Hey, thanks, Phil. Hey, good to hear, Heidi. Yeah, FAZ too. Yeah, FAZ is one of my favorites. Good call. I bought some yesterday. FAZ, um, 
I'm always in a little bit of FAZ. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm always in I'm always in UVXY. My buys yesterday were FAZ, the finance in inverse. I like FAZ. Uh, Lab D versus Lab U have been and Yin and Yang have been good to play. But I like FAZ, I like TZA, and I like S Triple Q. Those are the three best ones. You can see I've got FAZ on the on the radar right here, right? So well, thanks, Heidi. Good call. That's a beautiful thing, right? I bought some yesterday. Now, why do you think I bought it? Who can tell me? Why would I buy FAZ? What's the what's the price action traders solution? I trade millions of dollars with the stock. I traded forty million over forty million uh, last year alone. Yeah, gap up. Financials are going down, right? The reason I bought it is that it was uh, going up, okay? And high volume, yeah, good spot. Yeah, from Tony, yeah, good comment. Tony brings up a really smart point. Thanks, Tony. It's a closing volume is really important. You've probably heard the saying, amateurs control the open, but professionals control the close. Look carefully, at, this is another quick tip for you guys. Look at the closing volume compared to the previous day's closing volume. And like Tony was saying, he correctly spotted, look at the volume is higher yesterday into the close than it was Thursday into the close. Look please the height of this, of these green bars to here. Does everyone see? If we compare this versus this, this over here versus this over here, this is bigger, up at a two day high. That's a screaming buy signal. When you've got a two day high close on higher volume for anything you trade, whether it's these ETFs or, or other instruments, a two-day high volume close, 2DHVC, two, two I used to call them two-day high volume close. That's a really smart place to start initiating a swing trade. Now I'm curious, how many of you, uh, how many of you initiate swing trades into, into the close of the market or aftermarket? Let me know. That's one of the most valuable techniques you will learn from me. Professional swing trading, you may put on a starter position in the morning just in case the open range breakout lifts up and makes you good like this one did. But the most important money, okay, my biggest financial decisions, the biggest financial decisions I make as an active trader are swing trading into the close or in the aftermarket. It's the end of the day that counts because that determines the OHLC that the high, fre high frequency trading algorithms and everyone else looks at, right? How is today's close relative to previous day's close? If we end on a high note, throw money at it, okay? Yeah, good spot, yeah. So that's what you look for. High volume closes on a two-day high. Now I always, I'll start off my, how to say, I often start off swing trading positions during the first hour, so 9.30 to 10.30 or 11, uh, but I ultimately make my decision as to whether to hold on to those shares and or to buy more of them at the end of the day. So the first part of the day is a relatively unimportant, it's critical for day traders, that's what we focus on, but for swing trading, the end of the day is a lot more important than the beginning of the day. And please write that down. You have my word on that. That's extremely valuable and important. Ask any Wall Street trader. They'll all say, well, yeah, of course, it's a close. Everything's the close. So trade the close is critical for swing trading. So that's where you make your decisions as to how much of a bet, how many chips do you put in the pot? So that's what you're looking at is a high volume close. Now another good chart. This one I missed though. Was anyone else trading gold or was, was anyone trading gold? I completely missed GDX. I was trading other things. I did 82 round trips yesterday. I'm a maniac. Boom. I trade all the time. Uh, was anyone trading gold yesterday? GDX. That's a good bullish engulfing type pattern. It started from below. Started from below and then traveled up and closed up a thigh. That's an engulfment pattern and that's a very strong one. It traversed the entire day, previous day's range from 30.30 up to 32.8. So gold, keep that on your watch list next week. GDX or if you trade other instruments in the gold sector. Yeah, NG. Uh, I know a really smart trader likes GDXU because it's got better leverage, but I like GDX. Anyway, that's what I traded for years. So GDX on the radar, SQs. It's a beautiful chart. That's why I bought some in the close. I bought some of this. I did not buy GDX though because GDX did not have a continuous, it's another quick tip. Now you can still take a shot, but I like charts like this that have a continuous two day high. GDX the previous day was down and, the, and yesterday was up. So that's kind of a starting momentum, but I did not buy any GDX for a swing trade because the Thursday was a down day. What I like is two days in a row of up before I start allocating capital to a swing trade. 
So FAZ looks beautiful. TZA looks fantastic. UVXY kind of okay. It's not as good as the others, but it's still a beautiful chart, right? I made so much money on this run and this leg of the run and this run. Again, the way that I day trade is I put in a sequence of three to four trades, roughly 10 cents apart. Now I traded, what was that? I think I was, I want to say 1,800 shares. I was, I was in a lot of, maybe, I was in, it was four positions of three to 400 shares each. And as it spikes up and then starts to pull back, I manually trail a stop tighter and tighter. So I feed the, the winner. I position size, I leg into the trade every 10 to 15 cents, and then I tighten trailing stops at the first sign of trouble. And I do that over and over again. So uh, UVXY, really good chart. And if you folks, if you good folks remember, I did mention this one last week as a buy, buy, buy. It's our daily chart because of support here off the 12 and a half, 13 level. A runaway gap up yesterday and it's looking really pretty. So I bought a few hundred shares. I'll be scaling up significantly uh, if it does continue on up and I expect it will. Now this is a really good opportunity to get in on the VIX in instruments uh, as well as our other plays like our much beloved SQs, right? That's a stronger chart because it's perched up higher. Still the same pattern, a gap continuation. So that's why I bought some, because I'd like to buy small gaps to continue on up. FAZ looks good. Yeah, good spot from Heidi on FAZ. Good charts. Now, for the bottom fishers out there, KLD, it looks more exciting on the daily chart. Both our uh, inverse oil and natural gas uh, Risky plays, but they've got tremendous upside. So if the price of crude ever drops or the price of natural gas ever goes down, these things will go up. And I think they're kind of extended. Those commodity prices are extended to the upside. So this is kind of like the opposite of our gasoline prices, right? As the price of crude goes up, so does gasoline. And the inverse of that is way down here. Now, one trade that was really good for me a couple days ago, I'll share with you this chart was KOLD. Was anyone was, did anyone trade did anyone else trade the Wednesday spike in cold? Let me take a look here. Let me get the three day up here. I made the most money of the day on this trade. Or sequence of trades, I should say. I did it was six trades with 40 cent trailing stops on cold during the spike. I got in starting 17, 20, 30. And by the way, that was an alert that I gave to my live trading room members, a 17, 30 long. When it was down there in the gutter under 17, I'm a big fan of buying above whole numbers. You may have seen my stocks and commodities articles or my money show appearances or elsewhere on the topic. Anyway, I knocked this one out of the freaking park. Boom, shakalaka. I did that. It's like six round trips. I think two of them were stops and the other four were nice big wins. I had 40 cent trails and I put them, I spaced them, I think it was about 60 cents apart. So anyway, that was a nice big epic run in KOLD for day traders on Wednesday. Thursday, I sold the gap up. I held a couple hundred shares overnight. I sold the gap up near 22 and changed like 22.30. Uh, then I was in and out of it. I think I lost a little money on Thursday and a kind of scratch on Friday. But overall, the last three days, I'm net profitable in my cold trades because I got a big piece of the action on the Wednesday pivot. My reason to bring this up is to just uh, bring that to your attention that you may want to keep this one on the radar for next week, uh, KOLD. John's asking, do I trade bearish equally? Is bullish on inverse ETFs? Yeah, I, I focus more on bear instruments. I'm an expert in inverses. That's that's what I that's what I live for. Uh, I trade UVXY. I did over ten million dollars worth of trades of of UVXY calendar 2021 last year alone, and I trade UVXY daily. Uh, I specialize in bear ETFs. That's you will not find another educator more knowledgeable. I completely believe that than myself. And as for PNL or 1099 brokerage proof, and I'm happy to show it to you. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I totally focus on bear uh, ETFs, mainly for uh, both, I do both day and swing trades. I put on small slides that I scale into, 
on the uh, swing trades, and I aggressively uh, day trade these things. So, if you look, for example, UVXY, I love this thing under 15. I was telling my traders it was a buy anywhere under 15. And if you're live, remember, you remember I said that all week last week and earlier, uh, early part of uh, all week the week before last and early part of last week, I was saying it's a strong buy anywhere under 15 is a bargain, right? And I was right. And it ran all the way up to exactly, well, 15 and change. Next stop, 18, then 21. So UVXY is just getting the party started. Now, speaking of getting party started, before we, wrap, before we move on, let me do a little business here. I do have a bundle, and it's money back guarantee. I added that this morning. Just the goodwill, the good faith gesture. Uh, and we're filling up, so I'm going to keep the spots limited. What I'm offering is for the low, low price of, I think it's two and a quarter, 247, something like that, uh, you can get the rest of the month in the live trading room with me. So from now till June. 30th uh, and it does not renew at the end it's automatically it's one payment and you're over so you get to join me in the live room every single day between now and the end of this month and if you want to continue you can sign up separately but it automatically ends at the end of this month uh, and also you get one of my recent webinars on high definition video over an hour many of them are hour and a half uh, plus uh, an ebook and the rest of it and money back guarantee on that too so uh, anyway that, that's at trademastery.com forward slash bundle so do keep a, an eye on that i updated the site this morning significantly i added a lot of new content and a money back guarantee just to give you a safety valve there or safety note so uh do give, give it some thought you have my word i'm very able to share with you exactly step by step what a big turnout today thanks everyone for being here step by step what to look for as i narrate i walk people through my own live real trades i say i'm going to get in you know, say uh, UVXY here at, you know, 15.2, hard stop at 15.08 or something, and go step by step through the trade. So I give you a walkthrough and all that. So anyway, take a look at it, trademastery.com forward slash bundle. And you have my, my personal word and guarantee. It's a long ass page because I added a lot of information. Cool graphic. I'm not going to go through all this shit. But it does have a money back guarantee. And you have absolutely nothing to risk. So take a shot. If you don't like it, I'll happily give you money back. I'm rich. I don't care. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. That's probably not. Uh, but it's honest. Uh, anyway, the point is, uh, give me a shot. You know, work with me the rest of this month. Uh, you know, for a low price, uh, just two and change. 200, 247, 225, something like that. I forgot what's the price. What did we put it at? Two and a quarter. And you can join with uh, PayPal or pay with PayPal or Visa. It's not a subscription. It's just a one-time charge. And if you don't like what the, if you're not completely satisfied, if you're not thrilled, I'm not thrilled. So uh, tell me, Ken, I want my money back. I've had almost less than, I think, one and a half percentage points of people that have asked for refunds in 20 odd years. So a huge retention rate. But if for any reason you're, this is mostly for those of you who are new to working with me, um, nothing to risk, satisfaction guaranteed. So and you'd have about a week to make up your mind on that, so. Anyway, trademaster.com forward slash bond. Okay, let's get on with it. Back to the, okay, enough pitch. Let's get back to it. Now, does everyone see why, I, why I'm excited in swing and day trading this instrument? The reason is, you know, if you take a look at the longer term chart, somebody said I shouldn't talk politics in these Saturday events. So I won't talk politics except no, and I won't, I won't talk politics. Uh, but how many of you have less than no faith in our current administration? How many of you think the economy is going to continue to suck? How many of you think the market's likely to crash? How many think we have morons in the White House? How many of you think midterm elections, yay? How many of you think things are really going to suck from here on out? Well, if, if, if you and I are right in the assessment of suckage to come in the upcoming uh, economy for at least the next 24 months, um, then we want to short the stock market or play inverses that go up when the market goes down. And the way to do that is with me. I'm an expert. I know how to trade these things. I've traded millions and millions and millions of dollars with tax return proof that I actually trade these things. Uh, 1099 is on the front of my uh, trade mastery side, the screen cap for my Fidelity account. I, I just blocked out my social security number for security number reasons. But anyway, so if you agree with me that the market and our economy is likely to suck 
for the next few months, then work with me because I'm going to walk you guys through and I'm going to try and build as much wealth as I can right now. The fellow, um, who's a Kiyosaki from Rich Dad Poor Dad, said that you can make more money in a bear market than a bull market. I completely agree because remember, bull markets are steady uptrends. Bear markets crash. Boom, right? So that means these things spike up. The trick is managing your entries and exits. And I'm the guy to show you how to do it. I'm, I'm the guy who gets the call from people because I know how to trade these things. So, you know, people are always, oh, I don't know, it's down here, what do I do? Well, I'll tell you what to do. I'll tell you what to do. Let me tell you what to do. And this is a better chart because of lift. Notice, please, we had the biggest green candle in almost a year and a half in SQQ yesterday. That's, a, that's what you call a poker tell or a signal. <laughs> right, Phil, I agree. Good points. And see, Anne's asking, can you use raw options on your trade? Uh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. You can You can extrapolate it. If you're daily or, daily or weekly or monthly options, you can you can extrapolate that. I know I have a lot of options traders that find value in what I teach. I don't know the, the specifics of how they set up the strike price choice and all that, but, um, or if they're using iron condors or butterflies or whatnot. All that stuff is, whoosh. Uh, I know that with the world's top options experts like Larry McMillan and Saznov and, uh, and Price, but um, I'm not an options trader, but a lot of, I have a lot of options traders that find value in my, in my targets and exits and entries and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, and we'll give it a shot. You know, try, it, try it out for yourself and see what you think. It's, you have nothing to lose, money back guarantee, so it's risk-free, right? So why not? You get very few risk-free opportunities in the markets. And I'm not a bullshitter like my competitors. I actually really trade with proof daily. You know, on, on demand daily, I show my P&L from my Fidelity account from live trades I just did a few minutes ago. So you guys are welcome to ask for that. So uh, I'm, a, I'm the real deal. And I do not scalp thousands of shares of low float under $10 garbage stocks like these moron kids do. Uh, I trade things that have big ranges. Uh, I, I, I love, we like charts like what? Marathon, Freeport, FCX, uh, uh, Occidental Petroleum has been a favorite, OXY, uh, AMC and Carnival, some of the meme stocks, and of course our ETFs, whatever's hot on the day. Whether it's things like SOXL, I played alongside when the market goes up, or things like SQs and UVXY when the market drops. Anyway, visually, do you guys see the green candle? I'm, I'm a technical trader, I'm an expert. Uh, look at the rightmost side of this chart. Do you see it? From, how to say? When you scan for trading opportunities, you need to always focus on the word that starts with the letter R. It's the single most important determinant of success in your trading life. It starts with the letter R, as in piracy, R. Echo, play theme of the Pirates of the Caribbean. What's the word, magic word that starts with the letter R that's critically important to active traders if you're going to make it? Don't everybody post at once. James got it. Who else? Echo, play theme. Yeah, William got it. Thanks, Bill. Almost uh, risk uh, risk management is more important, right? And resistance and reversals, that's not it, though. Echo, stop. I said theme of the parts of the Caribbean, not Simpsons. The most important word is range. The, well, the most important part of your trading, correct, is risk management and tight stops. But beyond that, right? So I should have been more clear, sorry. From a technical analysis of what you look for in terms of signals for entries and whether something's setting up for a great breakout, the most important thing you look for is expanding ranges, right? Like an ATR, uh, you shouldn't need a squiggly average true range line at the bottom of your charts. If you do, just get your eyes checked. All you need to look at is visually extrapolate. Anyway, that's the biggest green candle since when? Way back in October of 2020. So. It's been almost two years since we had a green candle of that magnitude. That is a screaming sell, buy signal, right? Psh. They're telling you, Wall Street's telling you, they love this instrument. Biggest green candle in almost a year and a half. That is what we call a signal. Now, as an active trader, I'm a big fan of signal versus noise. Most of us out there is noise. Uh, hopefully not me. Uh, I like to give signals, and I look for signals amidst all the noise that the market throws out. Where's the actionable signals? When you see an increasing range like this, biggest previous range green with the whole real body green, uh, biggest previous, at least to my eyes, I can see is way the heck back here in October, November 20, almost two years ago. They haven't bought it up this aggressively and held on to the, the 
how to say, when a big candle is green, that means they're holding on to their shares overnight, basically. It means that they're, it's ending at a high, and that means people are aggressively accumulating shares, not distributing shares. So for that reason, demand is much higher. So that's a strong, actionable signal. I'm going to aggressively buy SQs over 60. My exit target's going to be where? I used to teach college classes decades ago, uh, private universities, and so they say the so Socratic method of Socratic me method of teaching, in which you ask questions, is why Socrates was poisoned. Because people hate being asked questions. But uh, just a little joke there. But where is the exit target on an SQ's entry at 60? Say by 60, 65, 70, 75, 80. Where's an exit target for a swing? Best case. I mean, best case would be way up at 200. But what's a more likely exit target? You guys know my fondness of my penchant for whole numbers. We're being exit target. Everybody got it wrong. Everybody got it wrong. Sorry, Bill. Sorry, Anna. Sorry, Dowd. Sorry, Ian. Sorry, Phil. Sorry, Dowd. Sorry, Wendy. Sorry, Jim. If I buy right over 60, where's my exit target? Come on, guys. Don't let me give you the buzzer here. I like round numbers. It's a hint. Okay, Bill got it. Bill got it. John got it. Okay, we're starting to get the right answers. The answer is 100, right? And the reason for that is there's a technical reason in terms of previous congestion right there. Congestion support is 100-ish. But the most important thing is it's a round number. And often you see stalls add decade values or century, century values. So uh, now again, there's nothing that's going to keep it from going up further than that. And of course, I'll aggressively continue to trade it. But my target. As an active trader who wants to make as much money as possible, as quickly as possible, I'm always looking for a reason, a story. The beginning, the middle, and the end. The introduction, the middle, and the end. Always start with the end in mind. Always start with your goal in mind. So my, my goal is to scale into this guy, and if it gets up to, say, 90, 92, 94, you know, I'll trade and tighten the trail stop to like 88, 89, I'm happy to sell a 90 right under the 100. So that's that's the window of opportunity that I'm looking to capitalize and make a whole lot of money in SQs is between 60 and the high 90s, right under 100. Okay, so that's the window of opportunity. I'm not going to be overly optimistic or bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and think, oh, maybe it'll go way up here. No. I'm happy if I can get 20, 30 points out of this. What that means to you as a trader is you really want to focus on trade management in scaling and position sizing. Now, I like to martingale. I may start off with 100 shares then double down by another 100, then by 200, then 400, then, then I usually stop at the third the third or the fourth martingale, the third or the fourth or reverse martingale. Uh, so if I buy 100, 100, 200, 400, I'm going to keep 400 the, uh, the maximum incremental buy. And that's another very good professional tip. I start off small and then I scale progressively. So I'll do 100, another 100 if it goes up, say, two or three points, uh, another 200 to double down on those first 200s, uh, and then 400 and each, you know, several points up. And then I'll incrementally add 400 shares at a time until I build a position, maybe two or 3,000 shares, and I'm out right in 92, 94. And that's one thing that I teach in the live room, and so much more. Anyway, we're about out of time, so I wanted to thank you all for being here. We've got lots coming up ahead, but is that actionable intel? I hope it was helpful. Those are the kind of things that I teach my traders. A very, I used to be a statistician for the Ford Motor Company. I'm a UCLA graduate and expert trader, and hopefully... Uh, give you guys some good honest tips on what can actually work. So uh, I would encourage you to take advantage of this bundle offer. Uh, Risk-free money-back guarantee. It's only 200 bucks, 225 And you get your choice of hour and a half long uh, webinars that I just did. I made high-definition recordings of this last couple of months. So if you missed one of them, it's a good way to get that. Plus a live room access from now to the end of the month and more. So that's it. Yeah, I keep stops. Let's see, volume. Yeah, volume's increasing in SQ. So, so long as volume and price. Again, you've got price, you've got volume, and you've got range. Those are the three critical. Well, I say the trend of the price. So, price, the, the trend, price, the volume that accompanies that, uh, the price action, uh, and the ranges. Are the ranges are the candles getting bigger or smaller, uh, along with that volume. So, those are three things to pay attention to price action in terms of the trend strength, the directional volatility, the volume that accompanies the price during its breakouts, uh, and also uh, the range, if the range is increasing or decreasing. Now, what that means is, I got to run, but 
if the range is increasing, you buy the breakout, keeps going up, but then, you know, for a swing trade, let's say you know, four or five days later, the, you start to see these doji, these little flat candles, and it starts to go back down, tighten up the trailing stop, because odds are it'll pivot back down. Then you get back in above resistance if and when it climbs up there. So you put on the trade, during the, you buy during the way up, and you tighten in the trailing stop if the range gets compressed, right? Now, if the range continues to be healthy, say medium or large range candles, you just you you scale in. Uh, but if the range starts to go down, you tighten up a trailing stop. So you know, as a as a professional active trader, those are the kind of things I teach traders: is how to trade, how to make decisions in support of your trading objectives, and the kind of signals that are once you know what to look for, it gets a lot easier. But you have to know what exactly what to look for. And that's why I spend so much time writing articles and running the room and teaching lots of tra thousands of traders. So that's it. Hey, thanks, Steve. Saying thanks, great advice. May I join the room soon. Hope so. See a question from a trader. Do I still keep 40 cent stop? No, I use between 8 and 12 cents for my stops, at least in my day trade. So 8 to 12 cents. Uh, so I keep it really tight. All right, you guys take care. You've been great. Thank you so much for being here. Have a great weekend and a spectacular week ahead. It should be a volatile one. This is a really good time. Uh, go to trademastery.com forward slash bundle. I guarantee your satisfaction that you'll be thrilled. And if you're not, I'll happily, you know, kick the issue the refund for you. No quibbles, no questions asked. I don't have time to ask questions and I don't frankly care. So, <laughs> but if you want to stay with me, great. I hope so. I'll see you there. Go to trademastery.com forward slash bundle. And operators are standing there. Just kidding. Have a great weekend. I'm out. It's going to be a great week ahead. I'm really looking forward to it. This is going to be a hot week. Uh, this, Especially next week with that hot inflation number that came out on Friday that totally tor torched the markets. Wait till you see next week. You want to be trading side by side with me. Risk free. So give it a shot. See you next time. Bye for now. So i got to stop recording up here.